Hello everyone. Let's get started on my top 10 tips for your new Voron, or in many cases, any printer running Clipper. I completed my Voron 2.4 um, just about a month ago now, and I've been using it quite heavily. And during that process, I've been making adjustments, tuning it, um, and in some cases, debugging issues that I've run into. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to compile what I've learned into this top 10 list. These tips are numbered, but they're not in any actual order. So number 10 is an improvement on tracking and charting the temperatures of your system. Although I'm using Fluid here as the interface, um, this should work with Mainsail and pretty much anything else that works with Clipper because we're actually making the changes to Clipper here. And as you can see, normally you can see your bed temperature, your hot end temperature, but I've added the Raspberry Pi controller temperature as well as the MCU temperature. And here's how you make the changes. It's quick and easy. Simply go to Configuration, um, select Edit the printer.cfg file, and um, scroll down. And in this particular case, I created a section here called thermals. Um, I put a nice big comment in here. And here you can see um, the text that I've added. And the key ones being um, temperature underscore sensor space raspberry underscore pi. Um, and here where I set the sensor type, which is temperature host, and then the maximum temperature of 100 degrees. That's in Celsius. If our pie hit 100 degrees Celsius, I'm pretty sure it'd be fried, um, but that's most likely the maximum temperature. Then go in and add another series of rows here. Temperature underscore sensor space MCU underscore temp and square brackets. I added a comment. Let me know it's the spider temps. Um, the sensor underscore type colon temperature underscore MCU. And again, we're setting a max temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And again, this is really only for charting purposes. Once you've completed this, um, simply hit save and restart, which will save the file. And then, of course, restart Clipper. Um, I've already done that, and so in this case, I'm just closing it. And then once you do, uh, simply go back to the home page, and looking at the chart, you should start to see temperatures logged from both the Raspberry Pi and the MCU. This takes us to the next item, which is number nine, which is bed leveling. You may remember from a previous video where I had an issue where the front of the bed seemed to be substantially lower than the back end of the bed. So during my investigation, um, of course, taking a look at the actual bed on the printer, um, I lifted up on the plate here on the front and on the back, and to my surprise, the bed moved up a lot, <laughs> um, multiple millimeters, and that was just not what I was expecting. And uh, what's odd is the bolts were all tight, or so they seemed. And what happened is, um, taking a look at these, the screws that were inserted following the directions um, were too long. So what happened was the screws were actually bottoming out against the rail. So I replaced the screws with shorter screws, not the ones as directed by the directions, which are really set up for a different plate or a different mounting style for the plate. And once I replaced those, I heat soaked the plate for about an hour or so um, at the hottest temperature that I would ever run it, which was 110 degrees Celsius. And then I tightened the bolts um, firmly but I did not torque them down. And looking at the mesh now, we can see all four corners are pretty much at the height they need to be. Um, of course, we're also seeing some of the effects of heat, I believe, on the x-axis. Which brings us to number eight, which are problems with the extruder stepper motor. On prints longer than four hours, the stepper motor would overheat and uh, it would stop printing. And it got to a point after doing that several times where um, it just would not feed filament anymore. And so um, I ended up disassembling um, the print head to figure out what was going on. And it turned out the stepper motor got so hot that it melted the ABS plastic. And the areas that are gray here used to be white. 
but I had to reprint them, um, rebuild this head um, because of the damage to the ABS plastic. Here's the part I replaced. Um, if you take a look at it, you can see where it broke. Um, the plastic got soft and uh, this broke. It no longer held the bearing properly. And um, be try and get this into focus here a little better for you. And because of it, the extruder stopped um, extruding. <laughs> um, ignore the areas where I yanked out the old heat set inserts. And if you take a look at the back here, notice the pattern. Um, that's the machining pattern of the front surface of the stepper motor that melted into the plastic. Um, so I had to replace this. Um, it took a little while to find a fix, but it's fixed. So if you're using this uh, LDO 425 motor, um, thin pancake motor for the extruder, um, which I believe is called for by the instructions. Um, and it comes with the Blue Rolls kit. Um, the motor works fine, but the power settings are incorrect. So again, you go to configure, to edit the printer.cfg, and then you go down to the extruder section, and we're going to adjust the power settings and here we have the run current and the hold current. I really had to drop these down a lot. Um, and this was also based on recommendations on Discord. Um, but the run current at 0.3 and the hold current at 0.2. Anything above that, that motor would overheat and cause problems on long prints. This seems to easily have enough power to do the job and it works really well. Which brings us to number seven, which really isn't tuning or adjusting, but spare parts. Um, I was lucky. I had my old printer, which doesn't do a great job of printing, where I could print replacement parts. But please be sure that once you get your printer running and tuned, start to build some of those key spare parts where if they break and if you don't have another option like another printer, um, you're actually able to replace those parts. Keep them on hand. Part six, stepper motor noise. This is an early clip um, before major adjustments or changes, but you can definitely hear the motors. And um, after a while, this started to bother me a little bit. Um, and it can be improved. And here's how. These are the XY motors I'm using. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is uh, one of the things I'm going to show you is where I adjust the current to the motor. Um, and I'm doing it based on uh, not ever going above two amps. In fact, substantially staying below that due to the motor drivers and also looking at the limits of the motors themselves. So if you have these motors, um, it's probably safe to bump up the current like I did as well. Otherwise, um, you'll need to work on adjustments on your own. So we could deal with this multiple ways, but all through Clipper and all through, again, the printer.cfg file. So we'll go in and edit it. And uh, in this case, I'm going to head down to the X stepper. And if we take a look, um, there is something called micro steps. Um, by default, um, if you go by the defaults anyway, it's set to 16. Um, I bumped it up to 64. Um, one thing to keep in mind, micro steps don't improve accuracy. They're not actually true steps that the motor can actually stop and accurately hold a position, um, but they do smooth out motion and they do quiet the motion of the mo motors between actual motor steps. Um, it's an adjustment as to how the driver is controlling the motor. You also need to keep in mind uh, the more micro steps you have, um, it will tend to weaken the power output of the motor as well. Also, based on the recommendations, um, the latest recommendations from Clipper, um, I set interpolation to false. This probably has nothing to do with noise, but adds a little more to maybe the need to bump up the number of micro steps. Uh, I am doing this also to Y. And also, if you look real closely, uh, the run current I've bumped up to 1.4. 
and the hold current I've commented based on recommendations of Clipper. Uh, the raising of the current was not recommended by Clipper, but what I found was when I bumped it up a little bit to 1.4, got a little more power to the motor, the motors quieted down substantially. And um, I left the Z motors alone. I didn't adjust the micro steps. I'm not too worried about them. Um, you you know, they do make noise, but they just don't run very often. Although I did turn off interpolation across the board. This gets us to item five, um, which is the motor drivers and the cooling of the motor drivers. This is a TMC 2209. Um, it has a maximum capacity of about two amps, which is a lot of power to be feeding through a chip this small. And I've noticed many of the printer CFG files in Clipper are set up to turn on the cooling fans um, as soon as the bed warmer is started. And at first, this might not seem like a really big issue. However, in my case, I was trying to understand how the bed looks different when it's cool versus when it's hot. And so I actually tried to do a bed mesh level um, so I can take a look at what that picture looks like while it was cold and again so I could run it again while it was hot. However, um, remember, I did increase the current a little bit to the motors um, and then while I was doing this uh, the printer or rather clipper errored out because the uh, drivers or at least one of the drivers had overheated and so clipper had shut down and this was all because the cooling fans were not running um, while these XY motors were running quite rapidly to do the bed mesh. In addition, uh, these are 24 volt fans and I was running them at 12 volts for noise purposes, which of course contributed. So I went back, adjusted the controller so the fans are running at 24 volts, but also coming back to these 2209s, these are the standard heat sinks that come with most packages. And to be honest, in most cases, they work just fine. Um, but again, I'm cranking up the amperage just a little bit, getting a little bit closer to the maximum um, two amps. And so these cooling fins, notice they don't fully cover the copper on the top, um, which is meant for cooling. And I don't know, they're, they do seem a little bit thin, um, skimpy. Um, there's about five fins or so. So I found these online. Um, these got extra fins. And also, if you take a look, the fins are substantially thicker. And the base is thicker as well, too. Here, the sides are solid. Uh, they're not cut through. So again, more metal. And again, here we can see them compared. There is a substantial difference in length. And that length translates the ability to cover um, the full um, area on the top that is actually intended to transmit heat. Um, whereas here you can see some gold sticking out one of the sides. So while these cooling fins may allow us to support a little more current and might give us a little more insurance if they're close to overheating, which on a typical setup really isn't a problem, it's still not solving the problem of when these fans are actually turning on. So let's change that now. So we're back into the printer CFG file again. And if you scroll on down uh, to this area um, called fan control, and here you can browse through and see the different options um, for, or rather the different settings for the fans. Um, there's one here heater underscore fan space controller fan is what it's called. And this is the one we're going to change. So I'm going to comment that out and in square brackets, change it to uh, controller underscore fan, just like that, and then add a space, and then another controller underscore fan, and then the ending closing square bracket. And I'm not exactly sure everything that was here previously, but leave the pin alone. Um, I set a max power to 90%. Um, I put an off below power at the 10%. And I have a kickstart time here of 0.5. I'm not sure that's necessary. The key items here are this row where it says heater colon. I added heater bed comma extruder, which means if either of those heaters turns on, 
uh, the fans will turn on. And here under stepper, I've added stepper X, comma, stepper Y, and stepper Z, which means if any of those motors turn on, even if the heaters are off, uh, the fans will turn on anyway, which is what we want. We've basically eliminated that hole. And this brings us to number four, which has to do with the filter fan, in this case on the Voron 2.4. So when I was printing really large pieces, um, I started noticing that even though the interior is heated due to the bed, I was having issues with really large pieces warping. And I've tried almost everything to try and resolve it. And the one thing that seemed to fix it came down to the temperature internally in the case. And outside of the bed heater, the number one uh, impact on the temperature here is the filter fan, which actually pulls hot air from within the case and exhausts it outside through the filter. By default, this filter fan turns on um, as soon as your printer starts printing. And so I decided to change that. So to adjust how the exhaust fan works, uh, we go into the printer.cfg file, click edit, and scroll down to the section where uh, the fans are controlled. And here at a section called heater underscore fan space exhaust underscore fan, um, I changed a name to fan underscore generic space underscore exhaust fan. I removed pretty much all the settings except for the pin and the maximum power. And again, changing heater fan exhaust fan to fan generic exhaust fan. And of course, uh, once doing that, um, hitting save and restart to get our settings into effect. And once you do, um, your uh, dashboard, um, once you scroll down to the fan section, will change so you see exhaust fan here and it's no longer a simple on or off um, basically this exhaust fan now does not turn on until i tell it to i can actually adjust speed here if i want to but what's happening now or at least the way i run my printer now i heat up the printer i run the print and as the print is complete i will then turn on the exhaust fan just like this I'll wait, you know, five minutes or so, or 10 minutes while the bed cools, while at the same time this ex exhaust fan is filtering all the air inside the printer, again, because remember, it's enclosed. And uh, once it's cooled down, I can go in, open it up, the odor is gone, and the print has not, um, the print did not cool when it wasn't supposed to during the print, which means less warping. And this gets us to the number three item which is input shaping there is pretty much no <laughs> change i've made to my settings of my printer that has impacted the prints more than input shaping um, this is an example of some of the ringing um, it's quite awful that you can see here in both the x and the y and by setting up input shaping you can eliminate all of this and end up with something that looks like this, where you can clearly see um, almost all the resonance um, has completely left the print. And this is all done in software. Um, there's no actual physical tuning that you have to do. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to show you how to do it here. There's another video on the channel you can go at and take a look that shows you how to do it. And frankly, there's quite a few others all over the internet that will show you how to do this as well. Make sure you do this. I'm able to hit accelerations of up to 10,000 um, millimeters per second squared. It's simply amazing. Next is improving your adhesion to your bed. So this is a standard PEI sheet. Please ignore where I smack the print head <laughs> into it in a first layer. But still, every once in a while, you need a little steel wool just like this and simply go over the entire um, print bed. Um, I like to do it side to side and top to bottom as well. And what happens is over time, uh, the bed smooths out. I don't know if it's from the heat. 
I don't know if it's a little bit of leftover from the ABS or whatever the plastic you're doing, but it just seems to wear a little bit smooth and sometimes prints have a little trouble sticking. And so um, once that's done, uh, or once I've achieved that point where the bed is having a hard time sticking, I simply do this with some steel wool. Once I'm done, um, I clean it with dishwashing, dishwashing detergent and water, hot water. And then I also will go through and uh, uh, um, clear it with a little bit of alcohol as well, too. You'll find once you're done, you'll have a renewed surface um, where your prints will be sticking as well as they ever did. So this brings us to the final item on my list as best ways to improve your printer. Andrew Ellis uh, created this um, posting in GitHub where, um, well, this was actually um, created for Core XY printers and Voron printers that are running Clipper. Uh, although I assume it'll work with most printers that are running Clipper as well. And um, as you take a look, um, there's a lot in here. Um, a lot of it focused on tuning. And then as you can get through the tuning section, um, you'll also find there is a nice big section here for troubleshooting as well. And um, I spent quite a bit of time going through this and it made a huge impact in terms of the quality of the prints that I'm getting from my printer. I highly recommend you run through this. And one final bit of advice, and again, I went through pretty much most of these steps. Um, for some of these, um, as you go through, you'll see where he gives two options. For some of these, there'll be a simple method and if you scroll down a little bit further, and in this case, this is pressure advance, which shows the standard way that most people do it, um, there'll also be an advanced method. I highly recommend you take the advanced method. Um, I messed around with pressure advance for quite some time, could never get it quite right. I followed this advanced method, and um, although it took just a little bit longer to set up, the final result was much better than what I was doing previously. Um, so again, I highly recommend um, this page in GitHub. So this completes the list of top 10 uh, changes you can make to your printer to improve the quality. Um, hopefully you found at least some of this useful. If you have, please click subscribe uh, for any upcoming videos that I will be posting and there will be more. And again, thank you for tuning in.